in the borough. Um, and it's those kind of united campaigns that are the most successful, I think. And we got a bit of a glimpse of that at the Elephant and Castle um, a couple of uh, uh, days ago when we were at, um, outside um, protesting against the Delancey planning application. That kind of coalition, they'll try and divide us, but when we stay united, I don't think there's anything that can beat it. I really don't. And um, so this, this is about people um, coming together. Um, some things that were mentioned um, in the discussion, um, a questionnaire or a survey. Um, we were talking before about um, when the CPO um, reconvenes in April, perhaps there should be something a little more um, to tell the Aylesbury residents what, what's going to happen. Um, and to, you know, to publicise it. So um, perhaps producing a leaflet shortly before the CPO reconvenes to encourage people to go to it and to kind of carry on the campaign. Um, and um, just to let you know that if you want to be part of the Aylesbury um, campaign or um, any of the other campaigns over housing in the borough, uh, you should come to uh, defend council housing monthly meetings. The next one's the AGM, and we're hoping to have someone from Harringay come to speak at that one. Um, and hopefully they'll have um, largely won by then. Um, you can see where and when um, on this pink um, leaflet that should have been on your seat. Um, it's on Tuesday the 27th of February, and they are monthly meetings. Um, so, uh, thanks everyone. Um, we just need to have some, um, you know, uh, if anyone's got anything further to say to uh, sum up, yep, okay. So, um, and I know that I kind of cut Jerry off a little bit earlier, <laughs> so you public public get a little bit extra. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah, can you, can you are, public take questions? Yeah, we are. They are the public. All these people All that have spoken well. are the public, so everyone has had a chance. Okay. Yeah. I'll take uh, questions. I use my time with some of the questions that have been raised from the front here about land values. I don't know, this might sound sort of very technical, but it's actually quite, um, it is quite, actually quite central to the amount of affordable housing we're getting. And you might think, well, land value, it's pretty straightforward, it's what's paid for the land, but it isn't, actually. Um, I'll give an example on the shopping centre, there was two separate land values put in. Uh, Delancey thought the, the value of the shopping centre should be £173 million, and Southwark thought, thought, thought it should be £88 million. Now, what are we to make about this? Um, that we've got these two huge disparities in the value of a shopping centre, which goes to determine how much affordable housing there is. Because the more you pay for the land, the less you have left over for the affordable housing. So, this question of the land value is one. Um, as I say, which might seem a bit technical, but we should be something we should be asking about. And it is actually something, I'm not speaking for the Labour Party, by the way, but that the Labour Party is beginning to take on board. It's beginning to look at land values, not just in how they're rising, not just in London, but elsewhere in the country. Maybe, um, maybe Sean might have something to say on that as well. Everything you said about um, the social housing or the social rent equivalent, as it's called, that is being offered uh, on the development at, or the proposed development of the shop centre, yes, it's true. It's not social rented housing, it's something called social rent equivalent. It hasn't got a secure tenancy, it's only a tenancy for three years. It may not, it may not even remain social housing or affordable housing for anything much longer than 15 years or 20 years or 30 years. We're told it will, but we have our doubts. Um, and yes, it is means tested. It is means tested by the developer who will remain the owner and the landlord of this particular development, Delancey. If you're fortunate enough to get one of these social rent equivalents, you're going to be fortunate enough to get an offshore property company as your landlord. Delancey is, provide, is applying for registered provider status so that it can do that. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons for objecting to this planning application outside of what they call the planning reasons. Um, 
Public money is being spent on housing. The government is spending a lot of public money on housing. Unfortunately, it's not spending it on social rented housing. It's spending it on such things as help to buy, which no doubt serves some use, but I don't think should be the priority. We should be starting at the bottom. Public money should be being spent on housing for those most in need. Leaving all that aside, local authorities just simply have to start applying the local plan. Every local authority has a local plan which has the kind of stipulation of the amount of affordable housing every new development should, should supply. In Southwark it's 35%, I think in Lambeth it might be 40%. And they all have the same kind of, uh, the same kind of uh, uh, quantities of social rented housing within that affordable housing. And when a planning application comes forward, they should look at the planning application. If it doesn't meet the local plan, they say no. <coughs> Now, the reason they don't say no is they say, oh, we'll never win the ensuing battle when the developer appeals to the Secretary of State. But until you start fighting these battles, you don't know whether you will win them or not. And another route for a developer, of course, is to go to Sadiq Khan. And Sadiq Khan has the power himself to call in these applications. So I think part of the progress we're making is we're advancing the battle, if you like. Whereas we were fighting the battle before in the planning committee stage, now we can begin to fight the battle with Mr Khan, if he's not minded to start rejecting these applications, and even maybe if there should be appeals against, uh, against decisions made by local authorities at, at the inspectorate stage. Um, it was mentioned about the Old Kent Roads. Um, that is going to become a new opportunity area. Remember, this all started at the Elephant and Castle, with the Elephant and Castle becoming an opportunity. But well, it's turned out to be an opportunity for developers, not so much of an opportunity for anybody who wants a decent home to live in. So I think that we need to be very, very wary of what's being proposed for the Old Kent Road opportunity area. And one of the innovations that is uh, going to be uh, advanced for this is, is going to be called Build to Rent, which is what we're going to get at the Elephant and Castle if it goes through, and that is this very kind of housing which isn't for sale, which is for rent, it's all for rent, it all remains in private landlord's homes and it hands and it includes the affordable housing and it includes the affordable rent. So Dick Khan is very keen on this because he thinks it's going to bring private money into the housing sector, this ha this money that we're so desperate, he's so desperate and Labour councils are so desperate to have, which they believe is absolutely necessary to get affordable housing. Well, I, I think differently. And everybody should keep an eye on this, and they should ask, be asking, what's bill to rent? What's it going to do for me? And they should be objecting to it. It's being introduced in the Southwark's local plan, the debt will be introduced in all other local plans, we should be fighting it. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. Actually, Sean, now we've got you here, the thing about the Old Kent Road is quite important because one of the things that, um, one of the areas that which could be excluded from, um, from being allowed to have a ballot would be infrastructure, um, where it's to facilitate infrastructure projects. And there's a lot of housing estates, there's, there's a lot of council estates on the Old Kent Road um, opportunity area, and the infrastructure project is the... Um, is the two um, new Bakerloo line stations which are planned. And our worry is they won't be allowed to have a ballot because um, they have to knock those down to pay for them. So, um, yeah, so please take that up um, and we'll be taking it up as well. Um, okay, uh, John. Um, I'll be trying to be brief. Um, I mean, I guess J Jerry talked about battles and about there are all these battles going on. Um, and. For me, the analogy effectively is like a tidal wave, and the real concern is that ultimately it feels like there's a tidal wave of demolition. Um, I don't really know why you're shaking your head at, at anyway. There's... I've been gagged. I've come from Walbar, Kensington, Chelsea. I couldn't speak at the Mayflower one. Obviously, professional reasons. I've come here, and deliberately I've been swerved. There's a lot of cowardice going on. And people don't want to hear what's going on. So, that, so it's like, gag me. No, no, sorry. I'm a man that's on the information. The analogy I have is like a tidal wave. There's a tidal wave of demolitions coming, and um, there are people up and down the country who are now facing concerns over their houses being lost by flooding and the sort of rising waters. That's what it feels like living on a council estate now, whether you're a leaseholder or whether you're a tenant. Um, and 
it's scary and it's that fear and you don't know what's going to come next. When I when I moved here six years ago, I never ever thought that was going to be the situation that I was in. But you know, it's a really horrible thing. Um, worrying about your home going. So if anybody that you speak to um, doesn't understand or you want to explain, talk to them about the fear. The fear of not knowing whether or not you're going to be there in a year's time. The fear of not knowing where you're going to be in a year's time. Whether you've put a huge amount of your personal time and money into an investment in it or whether or not you've raised your kids there, there is huge fear. And I think that is a palpable thing that we can take away and talk to other people about. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say I want to say a couple of things because some of the things have come up that, that, that raise issues um, with my work. One thing is about the housing associations becoming developers. Um, that is that is a hundred percent true. I'm afraid um, the mayor has, and one of the conditions of this this new ballot thing is if he's already, I think the words are signed off the contract on the funding, then you won't get a ballot. Um, and we don't know what contracts he's signed. That's not public information yet. I'm making sure that, as Assembly Member, I can get some answers off him. We need to know how many contracts have already been signed. And while this new ballot policy is in consultation, how many get rushed through? Because that yeah. is going to be really, really yeah. telling. He has... We don't know if this is in contract or not, but he's announced funding for a lot of new homes. He's got new money for the gov from the government that's £3.15 billion. £1.7 of that has been announced sort of to go out to different things. Now, whether that's been signed off or not, I don't know, because some of the, the tenure of that is like TBC. But basically, um, the amount of that that's going to be London affordable rent, which is the social rent equivalent, as you have all been complaining about, that would be quite the same thing. But that is properly affordable, even if it's of those rents, is, is less than the amount that's going to be in shared ownership. And shared ownership is what the housing associations love. It's what they want to be providing in future. Um, and I think we do have to worry that they are basically turning into more like developers than council social landlords. Um, and that, that is a real, real issue. Um, the other thing I want to say is that we have got the London Plan. It's the other thing that's out for consultation. I've spent my life endlessly responding to consultations. The London Plan's really, really important. Um, and in that, there are actual planning rules. And those are much fiercer than things like funding guidelines. Um, and they, they have got some things in there that need to be tightened up. They say that if you demolish social housing, you must replace it like for like. And then they have about, they have about eight different ways of describing what like for like means. And it's things like, he says, the same rent levels, or same or similar levels of rent. Nowhere does he say, actually, at the same tenure as council housing, um, and as what it was before. So we need to make sure that all absolutely um, gets tightened up in the, in the final guidance. Um, and so I'll, I'll cut myself short. I really want to hear what the man at the back says. Is that okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> you can have one minute of my time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Just yeah. like say, the work that all you're doing is absolutely excellent and very, very valid. And I just wanted to say that everyone knows the expression, like, and it was picked up very excellently by the, SG to, the SGTO earlier on, about the wolf in sheep's clothing. I live on the Canada estate, and back in 2013, mm. Peter John walked the entirety of the estate and the area with political activists and picked the blocks and land parcels that they wanted to demolish. I was never, I, I live, I'm a resident on the estate. I was never asked, I was never questioned, there was nothing on the website, there was no public meetings. I got a letter from the council and the resident body saying there's going to be a public meeting to decide the shape and size of the new block. And everyone turned up saying, but hang on, we haven't even picked the blocks, we haven't picked the land parcels, we haven't even been asked. But this deal was done behind closed doors. And so we have basically said, because we'd seen what's going on obviously in this area, we were saying danger, danger, not amber light, we were going red light, red light. And all our political activists said to us, it's all right, we know what we're doing, they're socialists, and I was saying, don't give me this, don't give me the thing about, because generically every two years or every four years we press the red button, it's like a scratch record, we've all done it. We have to wake up now and look at the facts. See what's happened in Harringay, see what's happened in Lambeth, see what's happened in Southwark. You have to ask questions. These people have got to answer the questions, but they won't. When I had my ward councillors and I said, how did you pick the parcels on my estate? I was decided by prospect councillors, people in the tenant movement, and Peter John. And I'm saying, I work in planning, and you're telling me these are the best parcels. And they said, oh no, it's for your, it's for your greater good. Long term, it's for the greater good. Next thing you know, they're saying they're going to demolish one of the blocks. And people are telling me, your block's not affected. 
It's only one of the blocks on the estate. And I said, it's a start. It's one block, then it's two blocks, then it's three blocks, etc., etc., etc. All the time I've faced resistance from people saying, you're getting in the way of progress, you're getting in the way. But they're saying to me, you're supposed to be a socialist and all this nonsense. Now is the time people have got to wake up, they've got to ask honest and open questions. I don't want to throw other parties in the ring which they could go for, well, that's for them. Maybe we haven't got people ready for coming up for May. But then make a choice, make a difference, then it gives us four years to get ready, put our own people up, and get the action done by the people who actually truly represent us, not represent a bigger machine like a juggernaut that we can't stop. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it.